Well, yeah, and and another thing that comes up for people is how do I how do I integrate this into my my work life, and how do I because often something that I didn't mention in terms of the changes is that often people report this heightened sense of mission or of yeah of selfless service of needing to be of service um, towards other people and. Actually, I'm mentioning this now because it came up a lot last night during the sharing circle that I was facilitating, um, where people had had this really profound experience and then they didn't really know kind of what to do with it. I mean, you know, not that anybody needs to do anything with it at all, but there seems to be this recurring thing of needing to not only make sense, but do good onto the world. And yeah, that just what you said that's one of my wondering, one of my sort of interjections and wonderings. Um, but it, yeah, it's mm. an interesting one. There's lots of stuff that comes up. So I, I'm curious what your read is on that, being a, someone facilitating support circles. I don't know if you're sort of like the central person that's helping give advice or you're just holding a space for sort of a more collaborative, I mean, it could be collaborative with you in the lead as well, but like a sort of like uh, a horizontal sharing of listening and advice giving and perspective but I'm curious what your read is on that because I definitely know people in my life who have had these profound experiences and now deeply struggle with what it is that they'll do in in their lives, right? Or 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 it's it's an ongoing inquiry for them, especially in a context of anyone kind of paying attention right now recognizes that we'll say like 99% of what you can do as a job right now is actually causing more harm than good right even if you're doing good in one way well you might be working in an industry that's doing harm somewhere else which makes it even more difficult to find it out so i'm just curious what your what your read is on that on that challenge i so i don't yeah i don't tend to give advice because i think that I think even just by speaking with people openly about your experience and what you're going through, that can help you gain the insight that you need um, on your own journey. I think that often there's this sort of like, uh, people tend to, I don't want to be seen as anything other than part of the group. And that's why I don't give advice. Um, so we, we get that kind of, people tend to fall into the sort of guru complex a lot in these kinds of circles. And I'm very aware not to, not to not to fall into that trap also there's no need right mm. because it's just a sharing circle but um it's not a cult or anything like that but i really tend to stay away from that and then obviously we all share advice afterwards we always tend to have a more informal discussion and share advice but uh so it's something that i've considered it's not necessarily any a sort of advice that i give to the people who ask me but um I don't know. It's really, it's a difficult one because it really depends on your socioeconomic context, context as well. For instance, luckily enough, in my own experience, I was able to quit my job and then pursue a new kind of uh, career in psychology by going back to uni, gaining the tools that I needed in order to be able to talk about these experiences uh, through a more scientific lens or academic lens. But for some people, that's not... Um, that's not an option and they have families or they don't have enough money to be able to do that. And so it's, it's kind of difficult. Again, there's no sort of one size fits all answer to this. I would say that if people have the means to then pursue a, the career that they want, um, then they should throw themselves at it. But if not, then just to build the little steps towards what it is they want to do. And, but I think that your question goes beyond that because it's usually for people who don't really know what to do um, after the experience or who feel a little bit lost in this environment. Um, I don't actually know. Um, yeah, it's a really tricky one, actually. We're in the mystery now. <laughs> we made it. Um, yeah, of course. It's it's. I would be surprised if you had a one size fits all answer there, you know. And and I think also it's valuable for listeners to hear, like, yeah, you know, like other people go through this, and yeah, it's not easy. And in, and in some sense, like, uh, I don't think idiosyncratic is the right word here, but like, it has to be unique and different for each person because each person, you know, is a different 
expression of life on this planet with different contexts internally and externally. And in order to find a way, and I think this is how I'm characterizing it. It's like, yeah, I was living a life that mostly made sense with what I understood to be reality. And now reality is totally different. And there's this call to realizing like, oh, reality is different. And there's a different role that I am inside in this. And I, I want to be a part of this role. And now my external reality and my sort of the systems by which I'm engaging the world on the various levels of my personal personhood, you know, identity, behavior, um, identity, behavior, relational conduct, uh, vocation, occupation, maybe not the same thing, all of these things, they're no longer congruent with this change in the worldview. And like trying to find and trying to like make the shifts in oneself and how we're showing up and where and in what ways we're showing up to the world um, in order to create that congruency is extremely difficult, especially in a context where very much so the world that we're in is base. It is built from the ground up. You know, it's actually built from the decimated ground up, you know, on a contrary worldview, right? Contrary to what the spiritual, spontaneous spiritual awakening tends to elicit. So, and that's, and that's, that's, you know, again, back to Stephen Jenkinson, maybe the challenge of that is the spiritual work of our times, of our generation, you know, and it isn't necessarily to get it right but start leaning at least in the direction that a subsequent generation could pick it up from there. And in fact, spiritual crisis, what we mentioned earlier, spiritual emergencies, you know, they, they often actually arise in the integration process for these very reasons, actually. So people find themselves with a completely new sense of self and identity and with, in relation to themselves and the world around them, and they don't really know how to deal with that. Um, and it can be quite a struggle. And I think that's why holding safe spaces for people to just be upfront and honest about their experience, uh, in the, in the positive and the negative can be really helpful to help them understand that they're not alone, um, that other people struggle with this and perhaps to find an answer in com within a community, um, and through conversation and through reading you know, different bits of literature and um, engaging in different, maybe spiritual contemplative practices or um, being out in nature. So taking on board what was learnt during the experience and sort of going one step at a time to then find a new way of living and existing in this world. But it is definitely possi possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even, even just bringing my own shift to the language there, like taking what was experienced in that, in that experience and then learning the learning comes afterwards. Right? Like we've got a lesson in what's up with the world. And now the learning is like, how do I live my life after, you know, and that's not easy learning, you know, but chances are when our end of days comes for each of us, eventually, you know, having efforted to do the learning, is is going to be you know like on the tally you know when we get there um and and also a number of the things you spoke to is like what what it looks like afterwards all just look like connection you know like being able to just speak to what's happening and have someone hear you in its positive and challenges well what's happening in that moment you're being seen what's happening when you're being seen you're with an other what's happening when you're with an other you're connected you know, it's like being in even like there's a conceptual thing, but if you're reading books and whatever, and you're getting insight, you're now actually connecting not only with a person, but an entire system of thought that sort of supports your sense of connection to like, oh, I'm not alone in these ideas. And there's all this stuff that all comes down to coming back into uh, pre a prevailing sense of connection in the challenge and the learning, you know, and possibly in the challenge and the learning of being human, which is you know, usually not very easily, <laughs> not very easy. Yeah. Totally. But even with reading, I mean, I remember when I was, um, when I was undergoing my experience and I was in the integration phase and I kind of thought to myself, even though I felt like I didn't really need the validation because I was so certain of what had just happened to me, but I, um, I felt the need to, yeah, to connect with others and to, you know, I thought to myself, I knew intuitively that I wasn't the only one to have had this experience, but I didn't know where to look. Um, and I picked up a book by Alan Watts, my first Alan Watts book, my first spiritual 
but piece of literature um the and it's called the book against the taboo of knowing who you really are mm -hmm. um something like that and i related so much to alan watts <laughs> in that book um and that in itself just shifted the direction that i was heading in not that it was a negative direction but it sort of it was another branch of experience of like whoa i'm i'm not only being seen i can relate i understand Feel like he understands me even though he doesn't know who i am and he's dead but right. it, there was this one wonderful... he does know who you are <laughs> <laughs> i wish he's my crush i mean he's, dead. he's my crush um <laughs> just kidding but um yeah it was such an incredible so even yeah spiritual literature can be really helpful um to just make sense and feel connected to to other human beings who have had really powerful spiritual experiences so i think in listening People who have gone through this experience have probably gotten a lot of good sort of perspective. Good as in like valuable, like generative perspective on sort of how to navigate what they're going through in some sense, or at least maybe some sense that they're not alone or sense making is possible. And I'm curious, especially given that 